Hi, I'm Tom R., pastor of Village Church, and I'm pleased to welcome you to the stories that Jesus loved to tell. I hope you're gathered with some friends and that you can engage in conversation about these stories because it's your conversation that matters the most. Let me invite you to pause the video and to read together Matthew 25, verses 31 through 46. When you finish, you know what to do. Come back and we'll begin the conversation. Matthew 25 is a whole chapter of parables, the wise and foolish bridemaids, the parable of the talents or the pounds as it's called sometimes. But it is this parable, the parable of the great judgment, the, that Matthew saves as the last word of Jesus' ministry. When this world, like all other creatures, comes to an end, Jesus sits in judgment, holding the nations accountable. The Son of Man will separate sheep from goats, dividing the righteous from the unrighteous, it says. You know, when someone comes seeking to join Village Church, we ask them one question. It's the question that every church has asked of people who would be part of their community from the days of the early church. We don't ask them if they're willing to volunteer at the food pantry. We don't ask them if they want to be a Stephen minister. The only question we ask them is, do you trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If they say yes to that, you're already part of the church. That's how you become part of the church. But did you hear the parable? Jesus does not say, when the Son of Man returns in all His glory, He will ask, who said they believe in me? No, this parable says nothing about what we say at all, or even anything about what we believe. Those who experience the blessing of God are those who feed the hungry and visit those in prison, who clothe the naked, who care for the sick. The parable of the final judgment indicates that Jesus is paying attention to how our trust in Him actually shows up in how we treat each other. It shows up in how we live, in what we do. If that's not enough to unsettle a bit, there's a, a surprise in the story. There's always a surprise in the stories that Jesus tells. They never go as we expect them to go. And the surprise in this story is the fact that no one knew Jesus was around. When did we see you hungry and ignore you, they ask. Or, when did we see you hungry and feed you, they ask. Both those being judged as sheep and those being judged as goats are completely unaware of Jesus' presence in the world. Both the righteous and the unrighteous assume Jesus is somewhere else. He, he wasn't around. Now I understand. If those who had seen the hungry, the sick person in the ICU, the prisoner in Leavenworth, those who were in need, if they'd seen those people and they had known it was Jesus, they would have offered care. I, I get that. But it was not only the poor goats who didn't see Him. The sheep believed that Jesus wasn't around as well. They didn't recognize Him in this world. You know that experience of mission that's meaningful to us. It, every year we have those from our church who go on a mission trip and, and they'll have an experience that they know is holy. It's meaningful and, and that kind of service, well, we would all do that. But that means there's a difference between that experience and what Jesus is describing in this parable. The problem is that means there is something different between us and these sheep. You see, in the story that Jesus tells, the sheep spend their time with the least of these, but they have no idea that Jesus is present. When did we see you hungry and feed you? When did we see you naked and clothe you? 
If they didn't know that Jesus was there, then what caused their righteousness? What caused them, what motivated them to care for the least of these? If it wasn't because of righteous devotion, what brings about this behavior? If I understand the text, this parable is not about how we grow in spiritual feelings. It's just about doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do. Your child cries out in the night, another ear infection. You'll be up for hours, you know it. You don't pray about it, you just get up and you take care of your child because, well, just because you do. There's an ambulance across the street. Your neighbors had another episode. You prepare a casserole. You volunteer to take the kids to school. You do what you can to help. It's just being a neighbor. You get a call. They've taken your dad to the hospital. You need to come now. You drop everything. Nothing else matters now. You just go. In those moments, if, if not in any other moments, they are the least of these. And it is their need that matters most. Now you may have had other priorities until you learned of their need, but they're your family, they're your friends, they're your neighbor, and if they have a need, you're, you're gonna be there. It's just what you do. Barbara Brown Taylor says, this parable is not about charity, it's about kinship. It's about recognizing the neighbor as family, as God's family anyway. And so we just do what's right. I have sympathy for these goats, I do. Because I love engaging in mission when it feels holy, when it feels right, when it, when it feels that Jesus is in the room. But the righteous, they didn't get that feeling. They assumed that Jesus was nowhere to be found. They weren't able to spot him around, but that didn't matter. They cared for the least of these anyway. I think that's the point. You know, when, when people are hungry, when people are in need, when people are broken, when the world has dealt a crushing blow, and when it seems that Jesus is nowhere to be found, well, we know what to do. We're to offer care. We are to be human. We are to extend compassion. We are to live in a way that, that insists that the brokenness of life is to be pushed aside, ministered to, cared for, met with compassion. And when people of God live that way, even if it seems that Jesus can't be found. Well, maybe it'll still be okay. Because when, when Christ's followers live like that, do you know what Jesus calls that? He calls that the kingdom of God. 